When trying to figure out what manhwa to read, most people will pick the most popular titles since they're the easiest to get into. They mostly have positive reviews, easy to find, and the story for the most part is pretty fun to read. Now, I've read all these titles and I agree, these are amazing stories that I think everyone should read. But let's say you've read these titles and you feel like you're not getting the true manhwa experience. Maybe you've read every single Hunter, Regression, Villainess, or ultra-violent high school gang manhwa and you thought to yourself, hmm, what am I missing? Should I be eating a bowl of spicy Korean food till my mouth is on fire? Should I blast K-pop in the background till I remember every single member of my niece's favorite group? Or maybe I need to drink more soju till I see God to really experience the medium. My friend, to truly get the manhwa experience, you need to read a Murram story. So what is a Murram story, you may ask? These are stories centered around martial arts and a society that's built by it. They're set in either the modern day, whether out in the open or in secrecy by the government, or in the mystical imaginary world of ancient China. While each setting might have their own unique twist on the story, such as regression or reincarnation, they will always use a common murum tropes such as factions, families, organizations, as well as the power scaling. The main character that we follow depends on the story, but these are usually the ones that show up the most. They can be a young master of a forgotten family that wants revenge on the ones that destroyed them, an orphan trying to escape the evil sect that kidnapped them, or an up-and-coming warrior making their name in the world. Each of these settings can be changed or have a unique twist on them so that it never feels like you're reading the same story. What if that young master wants revenge on the justice organization that betrayed them? What if that orphan is just trying to take over that evil sect? What if the up and coming warrior was actually a martial god that was forced to fight even though all they wanted to do was eat dumplings for the rest of their life? The possibilities are endless and each one will satisfy even the pickiest reader out there. Hmm, you say that this story is about a renowned warrior who's reincarnated and is trying to rebuild their sect? Not interested. I'd rather read about this guy that becomes a martial god after staring at a painting for 20 years. Now that is true perfection. There's a lot of different Murram stories out there, and as someone that's read a lot of them, it can be quite hard trying to figure out what to read. So for this video, I'm going to recommend to you guys three of my favorite Murram manhwas that I think you'll have fun reading. The main criteria for choosing these titles is mainly based on the first 20 chapters and how much attention they have compared to other popular titles. The 20 chapter rule is mainly because if a story can't grab your attention during that time, it's probably not worth reading. With that out of the way, let's start the video. Murm Wild West starts us off in the great imaginary land of North America. In this world, many have fled in order to escape the impoverished lifestyle of the Central Plains. The reason why the situation is bad is because of the Empire's tyrannical rule. You would think that someone would have stood up to him by now, and there were people that did in the past. The issue here is that in this world, most of those people have just given up and have decided to work with the government. With no hope in the Central Plains, many have ventured to this new land, hoping to start a new life. It's there that we follow the adventures of Chang Jun, a wandering martial artist trying to survive the harsh wasteland of the new world. As you might have guessed, the story combines the elements of old western movies and Murum martial arts and is able to pull this off very well. We still get the usual Murum action, but the setting and tone leans more to the Wild West aspect, making you almost forget that you're reading a Murum story. There's a lot of callbacks to those movies, and if you're a fan of them, you'll have a fun time spotting these tropes. The setting itself works very well since the author has a lot of liberties with how he wants to shape the new continent and what type of stories to tell. We get escort missions with a Southern Belle character, saving the townsfolk from a corrupt noble, daylight larceny, and we even get a story arc where the main character has to help the Native Americans defend their home from the greedy merchants. Now, I don't know about you guys, but seeing a Chinese man fighting alongside Native Americans was something I never thought I would see in a manhwa, and it still feels like a fever dream every time I say it out loud. The characters themselves are very enjoyable, even though they don't show up as much. My favorites include the shady information broker, the hot imperial officer, and of course the horse Jojo. He's the best character because, I mean, come on, look at him. Tell me he's not the best. Out of all the characters in the story, my favorite is the main character himself. As the protagonist, he fits the setting very well. He's written as the Drifter, a character that goes around different towns and villages, helping those in need without a reward, and has a mysterious background that we don't know. With these types of characters, we're able to see the world and characters through an unbiased view and get invested in their interactions. At the moment, all we know about him is that he left his family due to some tensions and that he was isekai to this world. Alright, I forgot to mention, this manhwa is an isekai. This plot does get mentioned and it actually plays a vital part in his philosophy. Before reincarnating, he was someone that loved to read martial arts stories. After lending in one himself, he talks about how his actions have been guided by a pair of eyes that are watching him and the world. They're not able to interact with him or anyone else, but whenever someone is in danger, the eyes are compelling him to go and save them. He could ignore those eyes, but doing so would mean that he's losing his past self. To him, he couldn't bear to see his only connection to his past disappear and because of that, he puts his life in danger to save others. It's a unique spin on the Drifter archetype that works well with this Murum Wild West story. Oh look, that's the title. And it's one of the few isekais that I've seen incorporated well. 
His love for these stories tie in well with his abilities as he uses techniques that others have never thought of in this world. One of the best examples is when he uses an acupuncture technique to save someone from dying. In other stories, this technique is a staple trope. Here, however, it has never been seen before and it helps to show how much influence the Emperor has on everyone. The level of world building paired with the premise, amazing characters, and cool fights makes this one of the best Maroon stories that you can read as a starter. If there is any criticism I have about the story is that there aren't more chapters out. The series ended its first season and was supposed to come back in July, but things happened and now it's October. After some digging, I found that the series hasn't been axed yet and is rumored to come back this year. Let's just hope that this new season comes out soon and that there are going to be more characters that we can latch onto. This fight is titled, Namama is technically a good versus evil story. It centers around Yizaha, who in his past life was a madman, always going around killing anyone who crossed his path and just not caring about the consequences. After losing his life fighting against the demonic cult, he returns to the past and instead of living a more peaceful life, he decides to still be a madman. But instead of just killing everyone that crosses him, he instead chooses to get revenge on those that wronged him and only chooses to kill people who do terrible things. What drew me to this manhwa is just how unhinged he is to everyone. My favorite moments are just when he acts like a complete psycho in front of his friends. They would just be having a regular meeting and if some guy comes up with a good idea, he would force everyone to clap to the point where he threatens to kill them if they don't. I find this type of humor funny and this type of main character is what I mostly vibe with. Behind his psychotic and somewhat bipolar behavior, he does genuinely care for his people. He knows how hard it is to make a living and what it's like to be poor since he used to be in that situation. He's already witnessed the ugly side of the world and what it feels like to be caught in between them. This mindset helps to flesh him out more and I'm glad the author put in time to write it. My only issue with this is that he's the only character that I find interesting. I can't think of any other side character that I like more or as much as him because of how they all pretty much act the same and don't really offer much other than being comic relief. Fights themselves are pretty fun to watch but they border the line of being too edgy mainly because of how much blood is on screen and how the body parts are censored. The world building itself is pretty interesting as a lot of tropes like the Plum Blossom Sword technique and the Howl Clan are both something that he creates. I find this to be kind of funny, mainly because this deranged psychopath is the creator of these classic tropes and could potentially create other staple Murum tropes in the series. Return of the Mad Demon isn't a series that you have to think hard about. It's a series that you can honestly just turn your brain off and enjoy what it has to offer. Out of all the Murum stories that I've read, this one was by far the most memorable one to me. The story centers around Bira, an orphan living in the woods with his bear family. One day, he comes across a man named Tanyu, a warrior looking to reunite with his best friend after being away for a long time. After saving him from a demon, he starts to grow attached to him and from there, he follows him outside the forest and starts to learn more about the world. From the first chapter alone, you realize that this won't be your traditional Murum story. Instead of the action, the story focuses a lot more on the world building and character relationships, immersing the reader into this fantasy setting and slowly introducing us to more elements as the story progresses. The author leans heavily on Eastern mythology and seeing these different elements makes you feel like you're watching a Ghibli movie. From the talking animals and unique creatures, beautiful nature-like settings, abstract magic systems, and even the old ladies. The most obvious reference that I found is the hot springs town and the owner is this handsome guy that can shapeshift into any animal. This manhwa does a great job weaving these elements together to create this fully realized world which is helped further by the art style. I always appreciate when a visual story goes the extra mile to make its artwork stand out and that's definitely the case here. The inking style alone helps to add weight and power to the action scenes and the roughness helps to add texture and detail to the backgrounds, objects, and characters without needing any complex shading. The main criticism that I hear is that the story is a bit confusing for the first 20 chapters since it jumps from different perspectives. I personally like this style of storytelling because it gives us multiple interpretations that we can use to piece together the whole story. Bira believes that his grandpa is this awesome righteous hero but to everyone else, he was the worst villain to ever existed. It's really suspenseful because you want him to learn about this past and to get more information on why he tried to nuke the whole world. This was the only story that I stopped after 20 chapters but I plan to read more after this video because I want to see how these characters interact. Any problems I had would be the pacing being a bit too slow for me in the beginning but I give that a pass since it's used to ease us into the setting. But just like the first series, this one suffers from a hiatus. The first season is done and at the moment, no one really knows when it's coming back. The artist went to work on a different manhwa and the art for that is vastly different that I had to double check to see if they were the same person. Hopefully they decide to pick this back up since it's one of the more unique Murum stories out there. If I convince you to give these series a try, comment down below what was your favorite moment in the series and let me know what other manhwas to read next. Until next time guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep on reading.